Today we'll be talking about the meridian passage of a celestial body. Uh, previously, we've discussed uh, numericals involving the calculation of uh, a meridian passage time as well as finding the latitude using the meridian altitude of a celestial body. I'll give you the links to those videos, but today we'll be talking only about the theory of meridian passage, what a meridian passage is. And uh, meridian passage is basically uh, the point at which the celestial body is uh, at its highest altitude and it's in the same meridian as that of the observer. So the observer is you or the officer on the ship who is trying to obtain a celestial altitude of the uh, body. So a celestial body is a sun or a star or a planet. But uh, on the ship, we use the meridian altitude, that is the altitude of uh, the sun to plot the ship's latitude or rather to calculate the ship's latitude. So if you look at the diagram on your screens, you can see that the this is representing the rational horizon uh, in which we we can use this to understand how the whole thing works in the celestial system. So to understand median passage, you have to project the observer, that is you on the ship, your position onto the celestial sphere. A celestial sphere is a sphere of infinite radius. And that is what is represented by the circle here. It is a sphere of infinite radius. And uh, if I look at the celestial sphere from the top, then the observer's position on the celestial sphere is denoted by Z. Uh, that is you uh, or the observer in the center of the sphere. That is you. That is observer zenith stands for Z. Now WQE is the celestial equator or the equinox. All right. Equinoxial rather, not the equinox, the equinoxial. So the celestial equator when projected, when the, when the Earth's equator is projected onto the celestial sphere, it's called the equinoxial or the celestial equator that is denoted by WQE. So north is denoted by N and south by S. So naturally W and E uh, denote west and east. Uh, and uh, each point on this circle is 90 degrees away from the observer. All right, that is observer zenith, that is Z. Now, if you think about it, so far I have not shown you uh, the position of the celestial body. Now the celestial body will rise from the east and set on the west and it has a transition. So it, it has a passage. During that passage, when the celestial body will be exactly in line with Z or the vertical line which is passing through the observer zenith, that is the point of the median passage. Now on the ship, we call it the noon time or the noon passage because it happens very close to 12 o'clock uh, in the afternoon. But it is not exactly at 12 o'clock. It can be a few minutes before or a few minutes after 12 o'clock, but it's still called noon position or rather noon passage. But it's actually the correct terminology for this is median passage. And the altitude that we obtain at the time of median passage is called the meridian altitude. At this point, the sun is at its highest altitude and it's exactly on the observer's meridian. Well, this will of course depend on the observer's longitude, but uh, for observers with different longitude, the sun will reach its meridian passage at different points of time. All right, that will depend on the observer's longitude as well. So if you look at the drawings here, there are a few different cases that I've shown you. And uh, if you look at the first case, uh, the, there it is showing that uh, the latitude of the observer is north latitude here. The celestial equator is denoted again by WQE, that is the equinoxial. You can see the celestial's body passage denoted by XR on the right and then X on one point of the, trans of the transit. XM is the meridian, is the, is the point of time when the celestial body has reached its meridian passage for the observer Z. And then XS on the left is the setting of the celestial body. So the celestial body rises from the east, goes through a passage or goes through a transit passage and then sets on the west. During this point of time, whenever it reaches its maximum altitude with respect to the observer and it is exactly on the observer's meridian, you can see that that is the point of 
the meridian passage. So in the first example, the observer's latitude is north, but the declination of the body or celestial body is south because you can see the passage of the celestial body is south of the celestial equator or the equinoctial. Zx in this case or in each case becomes the zenith distance. All right, Px is the polar distance. So if you see the second example, then you can see here the body's transit is again from the east at median passage when it is reaches its when it reaches the same median as the observer and then sets on the west. But this time the declination of the body is north. Alright, so the declination of the body is north because the passage of the celestial body is north of the equinoctial. ZQ is the observer's latitude. All right. In this case, again, the observer is also north of the equinoctial. So the observer's latitude is also north. If you can see the distance of ZQ with respect to QX, you will see that ZQ or the observer's north latitude is much greater than the celestial body's declination. All right. So ZQ denotes the observer's latitude. QX or XQ denotes the declination of the body. Then we take the third example. In the third example, again, the celestial body is also having a north declination and the observer's latitude is also north because the observer as well as the celestial body is north of the equinoctial. In this case, you can see the distance between XQ, which is the declination, is much larger than the observer's latitude, which is ZQ, although both are in the north. All right, again, Zx becomes the zenith distance. But what you have to note in each of these drawings is that you can see that the meridian passage is occurring exactly when the celestial body is on the observer's meridian. So they are all in kind of one vertical line if you look at it from a respect of the celestial sphere. So in the celestial sphere, they are all in one vertical line. Their meridian or their meridian, celestial meridian is the same. In this case here, I'm showing you examples of what happens when the celeste or observer's latitude is south. So you can see here the observer, which is the observer's zenith, is south of the equinoctial or the celestial equator denoted by WQE. But the declination is north in the first case. Right. And then you can see that uh, ZQ, although the observer south latitude may be greater than QX, but the latitude is south. So in each of these three cases, you can see that the observer is south of the equinoctial. The median passage is still occurring when the body is exactly on the observer's celestial meridian, that is XM. Body is still rising from east and setting on the west. And you can see here, in different cases, sometimes the declination is larger than the latitude. Sometimes the latitude is larger than the declination. But what you have to remember is ZQ denotes the observer's latitude and QX denotes the celestial body's declination. All right. So let's take this example here and you can see here, for example, if the declination is 20 degrees north, that is denoted by QX. So QX is equal to 20 degrees north. So declination of let's say the sun is 20 degrees north here. True altitude will be 40 degrees. True zenith distance which is ZX is 50 degrees. All right. So true zenith distance which is ZX is 50 degrees. So your latitude will be 50 degrees that is true zenith distance minus the declination which is qx 20 degrees and equal to latitude will be 30 degrees so zx is a zenith distance which is 50 degrees qx is the declination which is 20 degrees so your latitude which is denoted by zq will be 50 minus 20 in this case which is 30 degrees now can you tell me what is the latitude here is it north or south so you can tell me that if you look at the celestial equator which is denoted by the wqe it's also called the equinoctial so look at the observer's position with respect to the equinoctial. Is the observer south of the equinoctial or north of the equinoctial? 
So you can see the observer is south of the equinoctial, which makes our latitude south. So it is 30 degrees south. What about the declination of the body? You can see the declination of the body is north because the body or the celestial body X denoted by X is north of the equinoctial. In this case here, you can see that the declination is south because the celestial body is south of the equinoctial. In this case, declination is 40 degrees south. Assume that the true zenith distance or Zx is 10 degrees. So in this case, the latitude, which is Zq, becomes declination, which is Qx minus Zx, which is zenith distance. In this case, latitude is 30 degrees. And again, latitude is south because the observer is south of the equinoctial. The third example, as you can see, the declination is again south. The, the celestial body is south of the equinoctial. In this case, let's say Qx, which denotes the declination is 10 degrees south. True altitude is 80 degrees. True zenith distance is 10 degrees south. So Zx is 10 degrees south. So your latitude will be Zx plus Qx, which is 10 plus 10 equals to 20 degrees. The, lat the observer is still south of the equinoctial. And that is why your latitude is south. All right. So Zx will be the zenith distance. All right. So these were some few different examples. Like I told you, each point on the rational horizon is 90 degrees away from the observer's zenith. If Zx is the zenith distance, then the distance of the x from the each point on the celestial or the rational horizon becomes the true altitude in that case. All right. This here is basically showing you that the time of the meridian passage can be obtained from the nautical almanac. So I have covered all this in my numerical examples, but just I'm showing you here, if this is the first video you're watching, that if you go into the nautical almanac, and if you look on the right side of the nautical almanac and bottom, bottom of the right hand side of the nautical almanac, for every three days on each of the pages, the meridian passage time is given to you. The meridian passage time is denoted by mer pass, as you can see in the column, which says mer pass. It gives the time in hours and minutes for each of the day. Now this time is the local mean time. All right. So if you want to find out the GMT time, then you have to apply the correction of the longitude in time. Longitude in time is nothing but your longitude. The observer's longitude divided by 15 gives you your longitude in time. So if you are in west longitude, you will add your longitude in time to the LMT or local mean time to obtain the GMT of meridian passage. And if you are in east longitude, you will subtract the east longitude in time from the local mean time of the meridian passage to get the GMT meridian passage. All right. So I made this short video just to discuss the theory of the median passage because I have discussed numerical examples before. Let me know if you have, guys have any questions regarding this video. If you have any doubts, uh, write in the comment section. If you like this video, just like the video then. And I'll see you soon with my next video. Uh, let me know if there are any specific topics you want me to cover. All the best with your study, guys. Bye.